With permission, Mr Speaker, I should like to make a statement. As the House will recall, in his statement on the 4th of February 2008, my right honourable friend, the Justice Secretary, announced that he and I had jointly agreed to ask the Chief Surveillance Commissioner, Sir Christopher Rose, to conduct an inquiry to investigate the circumstances relating to the visits to Barber Ahmed at Her Majesty's Prison Wood Hill by Sadiq Khan MP in May 2005 and June 2006 to establish whether the visits were subject to any form of surveillance and if so by whose authority and with whose knowledge and to report his findings to the Prime Minister, the Home Secretary and the Justice Secretary. Mr Speaker, Sir Christopher has now completed his inquiry and submitted his report. I should like to thank Sir Christopher for his work and the speed and efficiency with which he carried it out. I am today laying his report before the House. Copies are available in the vote office. Mr Speaker, there should be absolutely no doubt about the vital importance of covert surveillance te te techniques and the contribution that they make to the protection of all of us from terrorism and other serious crime. Covert surveillance is an essential tool for the police and security and intelligence agencies, and the ability to make use of it must be preserved. It is, however, right that its use is carefully regulated. The Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000 mandates the form of authorisation and inspection for a range of investigatory powers. These include two distinct types of surveillance, intrusive surveillance and directed surveillance. Intrusive surveillance as defined, is defined as the covert acquisition of information on a residential premise or in a private vehicle. It requires the authorisation of a Secretary of State or of a Chief Constable or equivalent, together with the approval of a Surveillance Commissioner. Directed surveillance is any other covert surveillance that does not constitute intrusive surveillance. Directed surveillance can be approved by senior officers in the police, but does not require, under any circumstances, authorisation by a Secretary of State. The House will be aware that the Act also covers the interception of communications. This is a power that can only ever be used for limited purposes and requires, in each case, the explicit prior authorisation of a Secretary of State. It is to interception and to other surveillance requiring the approval of a Secretary of State that the Wilson Doctrine applies. Sir Christopher makes clear that, and I quote, the surveillance which I am investigating does not appear to me to be within the Wilson Doctrine because it does not give rise to interception as defined by the legislation nor would it require authorisation by the Secretary of State. This is in line with the Government's stated position on the doctrine. As the facts set out in Sir Christopher's report make clear, it is not relevant in this case. Let there be no doubt all forms of covert surveillance are subject to a strict and rigorous statutory regime for authorisations are conducted in accordance with the guidance set out in the statutory codes of practice and are overseen by the various independent commissioners, normally recently retired members of the senior judiciary established under the Act to ensure those using these powers do so in compliance with the law and to the highest standards of integrity. There is an independent tribunal, the Investigatory Powers Tribunal, established to investigate and rule on any complaints. Mr Speaker, I turn now to the details of Sir Christopher's findings. As he reports, Baba Ahmed was arrested on an, extradi an extradition warrant on the 5th of August 2004 and the following day remanded to Her Majesty's Prison, Woodhill. Sir Christopher found that warrants for intrusive surveillance for closed non-legal visits and for directed surveillance for open non-legal visits to Bab Ahmed were properly and correctly authorised in August and September 2004. The first intrusive surveillance authorisation was cancelled in December 2004. The second and relevant directed surveillance authorisation lasted until December 2006. Sir Christopher has studied all the documentation on this authorisation and its reviews and renewals. 
He says of this, and I quote, it suffices to say that the documentation shows that correct procedures were followed in accordance with the legislation and codes of practice were followed and proper considerations addressed. Sir Christopher records that my honourable friend, the member for Tooting, visited Barbara Ahmed in prison on three occasions, in October 2004, in May 2005 and in June 2006. On the first occasion, before he was elected to this House, he visited as a solicitor and Sir Christopher finds his visit was not monitored in any way. My honourable friend's later two visits were as an approved visitor under the approved visitor scheme for Category A prisoners. He made an application to be put on this scheme as a friend and before his election to this House. However, Sir Christopher notes that after his election, he remained listed in the prison records as a friend. These two visits, which occurred after my honourable friend had become an MP, were monitored by surveillance. It is absolutely clear from Sir Christopher's report that my honourable friend was not the target of this surveillance. Sir Christopher finds that none of the senior officers responsible for authorising this surveillance knew at the time that the Sadiq Khan listed as a friend was a member of parliament. He finds that, and I quote, the fact that he is a member of parliament first became known to these officers as a result of press reports since mid-December 2007. He concludes, however, that, and I quote, two junior officers who applied for or reviewed <coughs> authorisation and three who were directly involved in the monitoring knew that Mr Khan was a member of parliament, but they had no reason to regard this as significant. As I've noted above, Sir Christopher concludes that the authorisations were in line with the legislation and codes of practice. In summary, Sir Christopher concludes that, and I quote, the conversations between Mr Khan and Barbara Ahmed on the 21st of May 2005 and the 24th of June 2006 were monitored. The monitoring was carried out lawfully under the legislation. It was properly authorised and fully documented. <coughs> 